This week on KCBY, we take a look at the effects that Adderall and Vyvanse can have on teens. Meet a CHS senior with unique talent. And recap last week's playoff game. KCBY, KCBY starts, starts now. now. Welcome to the 10th installment of KCBY. I'm Marissa Green. And I'm Cole Calibro. We all know the phrase, just say no, but as prescription drugs become increasingly available, the line has continued to become blurred as to what drugs help and what drugs hurt. One drug in particular, Adderall, and drugs like it, such as Vyvanse, have become increasingly popular for students looking to focus better when studying. But students taking the drug without a prescription may not realize the full risk of using a prescription drug without a doctor's guidance. Rachel finds out more. For some of the two million teens who are diagnosed with ADD and ADHD, it's a familiar routine. You pour a glass of water and take a pill. A pill which allows you to get through the daily struggle of paying attention in class. However, in recent years, Adderall and Vyvanse have become a popular way to self-medicate for teens without an attention-related disorder. I just wanted a good score on my SAT, um, and I was finding it hard to study for that, so I just wanted something that helped me focus. Getting Adderall was really, really easy because I knew a lot of people who took it and one of my friends offered it up and I didn't even have to pay for it. Unprescribed use of Adderall and Vyvanse isn't just about getting ahead academically. Both drugs are considered amphetamines, which are highly addictive, and when taken in too high of a dose can result in abnormal heart rates and even strokes, along with extreme loss of appetite and severe restlessness. People who abuse the drug, so someone who's not diagnosed with ADD or ADHD and somehow obtains a prescription or obtains the medication, they typically take larger or higher doses of the medication than you would normally be prescribed. And when that happens, the side effects increase. My experience was absolutely terrible. I think I took too much of the drug. I couldn't eat dinner, I couldn't eat the next day, and I couldn't sleep. Um, and it kept me up the next night too. Yeah, I could feel my heart pounding while I was taking it. With all the side effects, risks, and downsides to repeated use of Adderall and drugs like it, this anonymous student is prompted, like many others, to continue despite the risk, due to one singular motivation, grades. Yeah, I, I definitely use it um, to study. I didn't really like enjoy it, like I don't want to use it just leisurely, um, but yeah, definitely anything for my grades. <laughs> for Case BY, I'm Rachel Barrett. Shocking stuff. And really relevant too, considering that semester exams are right around the corner. Absolutely. If you're a freshman, sophomore, or junior, you will be taking your exams next week for this fall semester. If you're a senior, however, you may qualify for exemption if you have two or less excused absences in a class and have it over an 85 average. If you have one or more unexcused absences in any class, then you will not be qualified for exemption in that class. Fifth and seventh period exams will be on Tuesday. Second and fourth will be on Wednesday. First and third will be on Thursday, and lastly, sixth and eighth on Friday. CHS counselor Cheryl LeBrew gives her input on how to best prepare. I think the most important thing to study for finals is not wait till the last minute and cram the night before. Um, chunk it up, do a little bit every night leading up to it um, so you're not overwhelmed, making sure you get a good night's sleep the night before. Get up, take, have a nice breakfast, make sure you're not hungry, um, but just focusing on uh, knowing the material and going over the reviews that the teachers give you. No exams for me. How about you? The flu got me early this year, so I'm not as lucky, but I will be sure to follow those tips. We'll be right back after these short messages. In life, it's good to be informed on what's currently going on around you. With the Coppell Student Media app, you can explore Psychic's latest issues of school news, sports, student life, and much more. Watch full episodes of KCBY, plus live updates from CSM's social media accounts. Download it today and get your mobile edition of the CSM app. 
Cop Hill Student Media, where the news comes to you. Are you interested in some free movie tickets? The Bellas are back in Pitch Perfect 3 on December 22nd. You have a chance to win reserve seatings to an advanced screening in Dallas on December 19th. Starting today, we will be tweeting two trivia questions a day. Follow our Twitter at KCBYCopHill and tweet your answers. Ten lucky winners will be announced on December 14th on our Twitter, so be sure to participate. Absolutely. Now let's go to Ashwin to see what's been trending this week. Thanks, Colin Mercer. As the year comes to a close, many students look back at the year as a collection of moments and memories. But this year, Spotify is allowing students to look back at the year as a collection of music. We looked around and found out what CHS students' musical summaries look like. In my top songs of 2017 of my Spotify playlist, I mainly had a genre of hip-hop with top artists being like Kendrick Lamar and Tribe Called Quest. Right, so some of the genres I have are definitely, I have some Spanish, some examples like Despacito, Awanez, um, I have some rap, I love me some Chance the Rapper. And it says okay. I listen to a lot of pop and rap, and that I, um, yeah, that I listen to a lot of Taylor Swift, which is, I'm a Swifty, what can I say? Tweet out your musical interests and tag Case White Cop Hell to show us what your musical interests are. Now back to Cole and Marissa in the studio. Who's your favorite artist, Marissa? Mine's Ed Sheeran. Oh, mine too. I really love his song, Castle on the Hill. I love seeing my year like this. For many teens, social media has positively impacted their lives. It's allowed them to become more connected, and it's allowed them to share their experiences with old and new friends. For sure. But for some, social media has become a place where insecurity and self-doubt are born. Sarah finds out how to beat our tendency to compare ourselves to others. Since the creation of social media, people have been able to become more connected and are given a voice to reach from anyone across the globe. But with these positives comes with negative side effects, such as a decrease in self-esteem. Social media kind of like affects my self-esteem personally because um, I can see other people. They post all these different things like, oh yeah, i living the life and like, oh, I look so ugly today. And they look absolutely like beautiful. They, like, they look the way that I want to and it just it brings my self-esteem down. It is possible that people use social media to fill a void. According to the University of Pittsburgh, frequent social media users have 2.7 times the likelihood of depression. Clinical psychologist and author of Face Hugged, Dr. Susana Flores, realized the significance of this issue early on. Um, there is um, a tendency for people to compare themselves to other people. What we see in front of us, for the most part, is on some level an illusion. Some studies have shown that we're comparing ourselves to our own profile. The exposure to others' highlight reels on social media brings out the feelings of envy and distorted belief that the others live happier and more successful lives. Everyone wants to be liked. They want their posts to be liked. They want other people to text them. They usually want a positive response when they reach out to communicate. Even though movements are taking a step towards using this platform in a positive light, many people still unconsciously use social media in a way that is hurting them. Want to change that? Unfollow the accounts that discourage you and follow the accounts that are motivating and uplifting. We talked to self-esteem coach Kamisha Coleman to learn more about overcoming these circumstances. Address the things that have not been addressed. Address the things that are hurting you. I did a lot of mirror work. I looked in the mirror and I would just tell myself, Kamisha, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I put you through so much. So I encourage even teenagers to do the mirror work, to say, I'm going to take better care of you. You actually have to build on that, determine who are, who are you. For KCBY, I'm Mildred Padilla. I think I might need to take a serious look about how I use my social media. Me too. Next, we look at one CHS senior with a unique talent she hopes to one day share with the world. Maddie finds out more about her love for a unique form of music. Music is essential to many of our lives, but perhaps none more so than Amelia Vanyo, a senior at Coppell High School. At a young age, she developed a passion not just for music, but the traditional and difficult art of opera. I didn't know that I wanted to do it until I was in um, the Magic Flute. Um, I was a lion's butt. And um, it was not a glamorous part, but it was really fun because I got to be around all these professionals. I got to see what this world was like, and I realized that it was a world that I wanted to be a part of. But the first time she performed as a singer, I remember she was terrified up on that stage. And now she can get up on that stage in front of all these people and 
seeing and it's like not a big deal. Amelia plans to pursue her passion far beyond just local performances. With support from family and friends, like fellow CHS choir member Ria Mahesh, Amelia seeks a professional career in vocal performance. I think Amelia will be successful in opera in the future because she has the dedication and the talent to be successful in the field or whatever she's involved in. She puts forth 110% of her effort. And I think that in combination with having like a spectacular voice will really make her successful. My hope is to get an undergraduate degree in vocal performance, then perform for a while. I want to be able to travel and see all these different opera houses and play lots of different roles. To Amelia, opera is more than just a passion or career. It's become a way of life. I have always struggled with anxiety sort of stuff and not really feeling like I fit in places. Whenever I step into a role, whenever I become a character in a song, I get to step out of all of my anxieties and into this completely other world. It's just, it's music is everything to me. For KCBY, I'm Maddie Holsey. Such beautiful music. Absolutely. Now let's go to Allie in the CSM newsroom to see what Sidekick is working on. Allie? Thanks, Cole. This week on Coppola Student Media, view our content about Coppola Independent School District new strategic design efforts, as well as an article congratulating Bill Parker for being awarded Teacher of the Year. CSM also has a new 15 questions video featuring theater teacher Lisa Tabor. Also, congratulations to KCBY for winning its second NSPA broadcast pacemaker. Root Fiona Koshi's story about this national recognition. Be sure to pick up a copy of the Sidekicks December issue, which hits Serax next week. Now back to Cole and Marissa. Thanks, Allie. Now to Ashley with CSPN. Hi, I'm Ashley Miznazi, and this is CSPN. Last Saturday, your Coppell Cowboys took on the Cedar Ridge Raiders in round three of the playoffs. On Tuesday, your Coppell Cowgirls basketball team hosts the Grapevine Lady Mustangs in the arena. Here's Nolan with your weekly sports wrap-up. Last Saturday, your Coppell Cowboys traveled to Waco to take on the Cedar Ridge Raiders at Baylor's McLean Stadium. Coppell received the opening kickoff and capped off for their first drive with a 20-yard touchdown run by Ryan Hurd. On Cedar Ridge's second drive, the Raiders drove down the field and scored to tie the game at 7. With two minutes before the end of the first quarter, Ryan Hurt punched it for his second touchdown of the game, giving Coppell a 14-7 lead. After strong defensive stands by both teams, Coppell received a boost after fumble forced by Justin Murray, setting up a quarterback keeper by Brady McBride to give the Cowboys a 21-7 lead with four minutes before half. Cedar Ridge quickly responded, scoring on a deep touchdown pass to make the score 21-14 going into halftime. The Raiders opened up second half quickly, scoring on a touchdown pass to tie the game at 21. With eight minutes left in the game, the Raiders scored on a QB scramble by Jack Turner to give Cedar Ridge a seven-point lead. With six minutes before the end of the game, Brady McBride fought his way into the end zone to tie the game 28-28. After time expired, the Raiders and the Cowboys headed into overtime tied at 28. The Raiders got the opening drive, scoring quickly on a 14-yard truck play to give them a 35-28 lead. Coppell responded by scoring a two-yard quarterback keeper by Brady McBride to make the score 35-34. The Cowboys lined up for the extra point to tie the game but the PAT was missed wide right. Just that I love them and appreciate their leadership. They're a great, great group of seniors. Uh, two great football teams, and those kids just played really, really hard. Congratulations to your Cowboys on a great season. This past Tuesday, the Coppell Cowgirls basketball team faced off against the Grapevine Mustangs in the final matchup before district play. The Cowgirls struggled to gain a lead and fell behind early on. The Cowgirls continued to play hard, assisted by great defense from Kennedy Rogers and fantastic rebounding by Nicole William. The Cowgirls' strong play lasted throughout the game, but unfortunately was not able to lead the win as they lost. Our defense is great. Uh, they do everything they need to do on that end of the floor. I think we just have to keep really working on the offensive end. And, and not even like the offense itself, but actually just tons of game speed shooting. For KCBY, I'm Nolan Palmer. As football season comes to a close for the year, we take a look back at the stories, memories, and the significance of the nights most of us will never forget. Marissa brings us a story. After a long week, Fridays are known to be a day of celebration between friends and family. But for the people of Coppell, Fridays mean so much more. It's the roaring student section, state-renowned band, and close-knit community that shines under these Friday night lights. 
Friday Night Lights is something that it obviously means a lot to me as the plunger boy. The bonding experience it is. It serves, you know, I get to passion out whistles or whatever to the student section. I get to meet so many people. It's, it's just really, it's a good talking point for people to get to know each other. Ted Emmerich, the radio announcer for the Coppell Cowboys, gives us his talk. insight on the atmosphere of a Friday night in Coppell. For as long as I can remember, it's been about pure energy, pure excitement, uh, and the pageantry to go with all of that. It's amazing how it becomes that connective tissue for a community. When walking through the gates of Buddy Eccles Field, the saying, everything's bigger in Texas, comes to life. Long before kickoff, the community comes together on these very stands in support of our Coppell Cowboys. I love Friday nights because of the way that they bring the community together. You know, ever since I was, I was a kid, I remember coming out to those games and just, and just seeing the whole community there rallying behind one team. To me, Friday nights are about unity. Community members from all walks of life, young and old, cheering from the very first row all the way to the last, unite under red, white, and black. I don't think Coppell knows how to do it any other way. The, the experience at Buddy Eccles Field, the entertainment value just with this team, obviously goes beyond that with the band and the cheerleaders and the drill team and everybody plays their part. That's what makes high school football so special in Texas. It's not just about the on-field product. That's what will bring you in the gate for sure, but there's a lot of moving parts and that's what makes it so special here in Coppell. For KCBY, I'm Marissa Green. Thanks for watching CSBN. Now back to Cole and Marissa. Thanks, Ashley. The girls' basketball team takes on JJ Pierce away tonight. Now to special features. Let this be another night To tie around my bed at night I know I've lost the fight To erase your face, my mind Awake, I lie here staring up beyond the sky joining us this week, CHS. Make sure to study for those exams and join us next week for our annual Christmas show.